Golden Retriever fur, one of the trickiest colours to get right. So I thought I would share my recipe for creating this lovely pale golden colour. Um, giving you all of the pencils that I've used, some hints and tips about creating the colour and hopefully you'll find it useful. Golden Retrievers, I think, are really hard to draw. Um, so, or the colours, particularly the colours to get right, this one is a very goldeny golden retriever. So I just want to list some of the colours that I've used, and I've used a lot. Um, just going to get hold of them now. Um, and it, it's been a case of um, sort of just having a bit of a play, really, and working out what, what has worked best. So... Um, I've got one of those in there as well. So these are a lot of the colours that I've used for the um, the fur. Now um, I would say that the the most used are the buff titanium. So uh, they're all the luminance colours and a couple of the light fast ones. The reason being that I. Um, this is a, a quite a poor photograph that I'm working from. So everything is very soft. Everything is very blended. There aren't many details as such, which might sound a little bit odd, but that it's it's just all lovely blended and soft. And the luminance are amazing for that on the pastel matte board. So my base basically has been buff titanium. Um, I'm working on this little bit here at the minute. So I'm just putting sort of a base of buff, buff titanium in and I'm also using the buff titanium to, um, to, to sort of blend and burnish the colours on the top as well so that I get that nice soft feeling without having any light pencil lines in there. So buff titanium has been a, a good one. The, um, the brown ochre 10%, so the percent colours have been fantastic. The brown ochre 10%, another really good one. It, um, the colours sort of change throughout the piece um, and you don't necessarily have to, this is, you know, for the golden colours, it's there's, there's some sort of quite orangey colours in there. But the using this more of a yellowy, uh, the yellowy uh, sort of brown ochre, the 10%, it's quite yellowy. Um, underneath some of the orangey colours just sort of balances out a little bit. And it's, um, it's, just, it's just a fab colour. I, I, I love this colour. So I'm going to use a little bit of that in there again. Not sharp pencils, they're quite blunt. And I know the direction of the fur, but in this case, because I want it all to be lovely and soft and smooth, I'm sort of doing random uh, pencil strokes instead of, you know, fur strokes. And then I would say the, the best colour that I've used, here we go, which might be a little bit of a surprise actually, is the new Dark Flesh 5%. This one I have used the most. So I've used it up here in the head, um, in here in conjunction with um, sort of the, the more yellowy colours, the uh, the brown ochre 10%. I've used it in conjunction with some of the, I've got the burnt sienna 10% here, which is a little bit more pinky. So where there's some tiny pinky colours in there, I've maybe used, sort of used a little bit of that in places. Um, but predominantly the 5%, the Dark Flesh 5% is the one that I've used for the the base of the darker colour. So I'd put something in here. Again, I've got a, a bluntish pencil. I'm working quite slowly to sort of build this fur up. I'm using sort of, um, I'd say I'm using sort of oval pencil strokes here. Um, to get the fur direction in there, but also to get that nice smoothness. So kind of bringing that in over the top of the brown ochre, and then I get that lovely sort of yellowy, orangey colour um, that seems to be perfect for this uh, particular um, dog. Now, the secret weapon in all of this is sepia 10%, okay? So sepia comes in the 100%, which is like a, a very, um, I call it like a purpley brown, I think. It comes in the 50%, which is sort of like a, again, it's a, a, a deep purpley colour. Um, and, oh, actually, I've forgotten this one as well, which has been brilliant. Um, hang on. That one, that one, and... Oh, yeah, that one. 
so yeah anyway um the sepia 10 percent has been amazing and what i've used the sepia 10 percent for is all of these little incidental shadowy areas so up in here in over the top of those yellows and oranges to create these shadows in here um to create the shadows in in this area down here this isn't finished yet i'm kind of still working on this but uh, bringing the sepia 10 percent in over the top of the um those oranges and the the, the dark flesh five percent and you start to get a really really lovely shadow in there basically so this has been amazing um if you've got any sort of um yellowy gingery goldeny colored animal using a violety color like this that's more violet i think than blue um is a really really good idea now oops dropped it has it gone oh, that's okay um now the other ones that i've used as well i'll just introduce these because these have been really really useful too i've got the oh i've got the light fast oyster now this is a very icy pink um, and this has been amazing i have to say absolutely amazing for blending and burnishing and just bringing like a little bit of something i can't tell you what it is because i don't know um it just brings something to the piece it just brings that little bit of violety pinky lightness to the piece which is just fantastic um the oyster you can see i use an awful lot um so brilliant brilliant in over the top of your oranges and your yellows and again has been great for sort of like the lighter areas over here i don't know if you can see yeah over here i've used it in here just to get that lovely sort of glow it's like a it's like a glowy pencil up here on the top of the ears i've used it in there as well now the other one that i've used um in some of the darkest areas is the mars black again fantastic pencil i've used it in areas of shadow like down here i haven't used it in the mouth area or the nose i've just kind of used it in here and i've used it to kind of bring this dark shadow in here as well flipping dogs barking um so the mars black's great now one of the things that i would say is it can be a bit of an issue with the mars black is that when you put it in over the top of the luminance you can it can go a little bit gritty and grainy looking um, so use it very 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 lightly use a, a very very light pressure um, yeah so and then what you can do is you can just sort of gently smooth over the top of that um, with something like the sepia 10 percent and then you get the smoothness and that grittiness disappears now the drawings the derwent drawings these big fat ones they're, they're waxy they're very uh, soft these are awesome for if you're doing something like this that has um little detail as in little sort of hair detail but an, an awful lot of sort of tonal detail these are fantastic and again i've got the mars violet here which has been brilliant for these darker areas um they go down very 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 softly i'll be using it down here as well um so you can really get a quite a lot of coverage and on the pastel mat you can really really cover the tooth of the pastel mat i'm using the board so it is um you know slightly smoother um and then the light sienna another really great color in here again so i've maybe sort of done a layer of the light sienna in places maybe put a little bit in here to sort of show you light sienna goes down very 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 smoothly and then you can build the, the other colors in over the top don't have to use hard pressure it's all lovely soft pressure um, and then the third one is the wheat the drawing wheat which is it's like a creamy color but it's that sort of um greeny creamy color and again this has been really fantastic as an initial base um down on this sort of the, the softer hair that i'm starting to draw in here so again we can mix it in with the other colors so what i've tended to do is um sort of have a, a range of colors in my hand the only one that i've used as well is the naples ochre um, very similar actually to the um the wheat but just that little bit brighter um so this has been a good one for sort of like some of these brighter yellowy areas in here um and just keeping all of these in my hand and sort of like uh, moving between the different colors just to get a different spectrum of the um those warm sort of yellowy orangey colors so that everything's not exactly the same um 
but uh, I would say my main recipe for this particular dog let's just get these colours in here and then we can the colours that I've used the most oh and then there's also the raw umber which is a great one for just bringing a little bit of that um, sort of muted less warm colour in um, up, on, up on the top here uh, kind of up underneath the eyes uh, into here as well where it's it's very similar to the warm grey to polychromos um, you know and we can just sort of bring in that little bit of darkness but still keeping it relatively light if you see what I mean um, but I would say my main recipe for this dog are these four okay so we have the buff titanium as a oh no not that one <laughs> not that one um, hang on, hang on, where have you gone? There you go. These four. So we have the main um, uh, lay down of, of colour with the buff titanium, which gives you a nice sort of very pale, creamy, yellowy colour, as we can see here. <coughs> I've got the brown ochre 10% which has been great for sort of getting these more yellowy areas in less sort of orangey um in over the top of the um the buff titanium <clears throat> the dark flesh five percent has been absolutely a god save honestly it's been fantastic um and again you can get that in over the top of the other colors we can use it in conjunction with the brown ochre we can use it without the brown ochre just to give a different sort of feel for the the um you know the fur and if we need to bring a little bit of pink in there then we can either use the oyster just to bring a little tiny touch of that pinkiness in or we can use something a little bit stronger like the um uh, burnt sienna 10 percent, which is just that little bit more pinky and quite nice actually to kind of just introduce this into places and then you get that sort of real difference within the within the fur and then for shadows the uh sepia 10 percent has been it's just the most brilliant brilliant pencil it really is um fantastic for creating those little subtle changes whether you use it with really 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 light pressure in over the top just to create those little tiny subtle uh, tonal changes in the hair or you use it a little bit stronger to get um you know stronger sort of purpley colors in there so that would that would be my um they would be my color recipe for um for this month those four um really really awesome for the golden retriever fur Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. Hope to see you again soon.